Hello guys, Mr. Ray back here, and I hope you guys had a wonderful spring break. Hopefully you got outside, you know, still social distancing, but hopefully you got outside, got some fresh air, and we're away from the screens for the week, because I know, of course, you've been doing a lot of online instruction in front of a screen, so I hope you got outside and kind of enjoyed yourselves last week. But now getting back into it, if you kind of forgot what we were doing last week before spring break started, we looked at the North and the South industry during the Industrial Revolution and how it really impacted American society. And now we're starting to like push forward, right? As the country is growing economically, industrially, it's also going to grow in size. And it's been growing in size during the Industrial Revolution, you know, more, more so even after the American Revolution, right? When we looked at it, they wanted to or even if we look even further back into the French and Indian War, the um, American colonists wanted to go into the Ohio River Valley, right? And we saw this. American society is always expanding. So that being said, that's still true to this point, where, if you remember during Thomas Jefferson's presidency, we got the Louisiana Purchase, from the, we bought it from the French, and America was expanding in size. Now, it's always been expanding in size, during all the different topics we've been talking about, but now it's really coming to the fore, like the foreground, and that's why we're going to be looking at it. So before we start talking about America expanding and what this idea is called and what comes from this, let's analyze this quote together. So this quote is from John L. O. Sullivan, okay? And John L. O. Sullivan is going to say, we are the nation of human progress, and who will... What can set limits to our onward march? Now, I want you to think about that first before I really break it down for you. Again, I'll read it. We are the nation of human progress, and who will, what can, set limits to our onward march? Now, to give you some background, John L. O'Sullivan, he was an American colonist or editor, basically saying he wrote in newspapers. And this is the guy that's going to coin the phrase manifest destiny now if you looked on canvas you probably saw manifest destiny intro you might know what it means you might not know what it means and that's okay that's why we're learning about it but this is the guy that creates this idea of manifest destiny that we're going to be learning about today and also your next assignment later on in the week but like i said he's an american columnist he's an editor he's a writer during this time and he coins the phrase manifest destiny but let's break down his words he says we are a nation of human progress well, plain and simple there, right? We are a nation of human progress. We see this idea of human progress. If you're growing as a nation, you're going to be progressing. So we see this idea of making progress. And who will, what can, set limits to our onward march. So looking at that, he's kind of saying, you know, as Americans, we are a nation of human progress. And the people who will and the people who can tell us or set limits on our onward march are going to be ourselves not anyone else. Now, this can be controversial because if you look at the United States, right, where are they going to be expanding to? The West. What we also saw with Andrew Jackson, if you want to expand out West, who else is living there? Native Americans. So he's kind of putting this idea out there, right, saying like, it, no one else is going to be telling us what we can and can't do. As Americans, we tell ourselves what we can and can't do. So it's kind of interesting to see how we're going to branch out into the West with some kind of, you know, is there going to, well, we kind of saw violence, right? But see how the reactions are going to be moving out into the rest of the country. Because we don't own, as America during this time, we don't own, you know, the Western part or the, like, the West Coast of the country, which we're going to see in a second. So let's get into the lesson today. So today you will be able to analyze how the glorification of the American frontier, meaning the American West, through Manifest Destiny, impacted American society. And you will know you've succeeded when you have learned about the real American frontier and completed the Manifest Destiny intro Google Doc, which I'll show you at the end of this video. So let us continue along. Like every lesson, there is a question I want you to keep in the back of your mind while you're going through this. And the essential question for this lesson is, how was the idea of the American frontier glamorized okay now if you think of glamour right beautification if you think of 
this idea of glamour. Like, it's just like, oh, I want, like, I want that, right? It's glamorized. It's like, oh, this is amazing. Why, why can't I have this? I want this. So we're going to look at the idea of how is the American frontier glamorized, right? But also, because it's glamorized, how is it going to impact the settlement or people moving out and living into the West? So keep this I or keep this question or this idea in the back of your head as we go through this lesson. So first off, manifest destiny. Expansion is inevitable, right? And you're going to see this picture here. This picture is called American Progress. We see this idea of progress yet again. And it's by John Gast. Now, this picture kind of sums up this idea of Manifest Destiny, okay? Now, again, Manifest Destiny, expansion is inevitable, ties in with this picture, but let's get a bigger view of the picture, kind of blown up. And you will see this picture on your Google Doc as well. So this picture, there's a lot of aspects to this, right? You could sit here for a good 10, 15 minutes looking at the picture and picking out little pieces of information from it. I'm just going to pick out a couple for you so you can kind of see some little things that you might miss, right? So looking at it, first and foremost, what we want to see is, if you look on the left-hand side, you're going to see, of course, Native Americans. Now, looking at this section over here, if you look at Native Americans, what's kind of happening to Native Americans? Well, it looks like they're being pushed out right? So this whole idea of the picture can be, say, like, the east coast of the United States, and then the west coast of the United States. And we could see where Americans were, or where Americans were settled, they're kind of pushing out Native Americans further and further out west. So that's the first part of the picture. But we also see a very distinct, a very distinct divide between each sides. So if I drew an imaginary line down the middle of the picture, we see a distinction. On the right-hand side, it's much more, you know, lighter, right? We see a light side. And on this side, we see a darker side. These are different tones, different themes to the picture. Light, dark, light, dark. And if you notice, on the dark side, we see storm clouds coming over. Could this be an idea of maybe, like, seeing, like, the trail of tears, right? Another way you can look at this is light and dark, almost this idea, right? This idea of enlightenment, of higher thinking, a higher level of thinking and life, society. So if you go with that aspect of it, you can see it kind of shows Native Americans as more so, not barbaric, but maybe not as civilized as American society. Because when you look at American society, we see trains, horses and carriages, right? We see it looks like telephone wire coming out into the West. Major cities as opposed to roaming with Buffalo, right? So we see a distinct split between American society and how it's expanding out into the West and bringing its ideas, its thinking, its technologies with it as they push out the Native Americans. But that's not all that's in this picture. Dead center of the picture, right, we see a lady. Now, major part of this is, if you look in her hand right here, right, you see a book. Now, this book, if you look closely, it's kind of hard to see, is the Bible. So we see this lady carrying telephone wire and a Bible in her hand. The idea of Manifest Destiny is commonly going to be portrayed as, especially with John L. Sullivan, going to be portrayed as our God-given right to go and take this land, saying it's our God-given right as Americans to go and take this land, to kind of go in there and live and create a society on this land. So when you think of Manifest Destiny, saying think of expansion, westward expansion, but also this idea of it's our God-given right to expand out into this territory and use it for our benefit. And that's why we see kind of what looks like almost to be an angel holding a Bible guiding American citizens out into the West. So, let's continue along. Now, during this time, okay, we get a lot of land, a lot of land. And we stretch out, finally, from coast to coast. But we're going to kind of learn this in sections to more easily break this down. So, we already know we had... the th Whoopsie. We already know we had the third... The, why is it not working? There we go. We already know we had the 13 colonies right here. 
right? So we had 13 colonies. And then as we expand out west with Thomas Jefferson, if you remember, we got the Louisiana Purchase, which nearly doubles the size of the United States. But then we also get land such as, or areas such as, this Texas area, right? We get this land when we think of California, Nevada, uh, Utah, all those other states and territories. We get those from the Mexican Session, which we're going to go over. And then we also get, all the way up top, the areas of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, during uh, 1846, known as the Oregon Country. And that's kind of where the idea of the Oregon Trail comes from. So we're going to break these off into different sections as we go through Western expansion. But for right now, we're just focusing in on Manifest Destiny as a whole. That's the main thing we're looking at first. So this week is all about this idea of Manifest Destiny and Western expansion, frontier life. And then we're going to get into how we got the areas around Texas and California and Oregon and things of that nature. So... Just an example of frontier life, right? What the um, real American frontier life looked like. Well, it's very rustic, right? We're not going to have major cities because they're going out into wild wilderness, out into the frontier, the Great Plains, right? Mountains. And it's going to be a different lifestyle than what you would think of of the East Coast during that time. So as we, as Americans, expand out West, right? You notice a couple things. In the top left-hand picture, this idea of, you know, log cabin houses comes about right the city of log uh log cabin house houses uh kind of like if you look at the clothing is much different than when you think of on on the east coast during that time the top right we see a bunch of travelers taking their uh covered wagons from the east and making the journey out west now why families would make this journey is if you can make this journey right you take this journey, you make it out into the West, a, a lot, a lot of, you know, Americans in our time, they want to create a better life for not only themselves, but their family. So that's one of the main reasons why they would want to expand out West. And we see that in the top right picture. We see them with covered wagons, taking all of their belongings, putting them into wagons, and moving themselves and their family out into the West to try and create a better life. In the bottom left, one of the things that we see happening in this picture is the hunting of buffalo. Now, we're going to get to this a little bit later, but with the hunting hunting of buffalo, as Americans move out into the West, they're more so hunting buffalo, not only for food, but almost for, like, you know, sport, just for hunting in general. And on the, on the flip side, or the opposite side, Native Americans would hunt buffalo and use every single part of the animal, you know, as resources. But as Americans move out to the West, they're just killing buffalo just to kill them for sport. So we're going to see buffalo numbers go down exponentially because of Americans moving out west. Down on the bottom center, we kind of see the clothing again that they would be wearing, right? If you would almost think of those like coonskin hats, the raccoon skin uh, caps that they would wear on their heads with a little tail, those start coming around during this time. And then also in the bottom right, it's much more of a less lavish uh, living style than the top right. But these, again, are settlers moving out into the West, and we kind of see not a covered wagon, but we see a makeshift tent in the background as they sit around a fire. So, frontier life is going to be extremely different than what's on the coast of, or the East Coast of the United States during this time, which we're going to get to more so throughout this uh, unit. But, for you, Manifest Destiny is going to be your first topic. For this week. So your first main uh, assignment, let's say, is Manifest Destiny intro. So when you look at it, Manifest Destiny and Westward Expansion, talking about Americans moving out west, this is going to be your first assignment. And this assignment is due on Wednesday, April 15th by 11.59 p.m. Now what I am asking you is... You're going to make a copy of the Manifest Destiny intro Google Doc like you've been doing for other assignments. And you're going to use the American Progress painting that's on your Google Doc. Along at the bottom, there's two primary sources. You're going to use the painting. That You have to, um, you have to use the painting to create three, uh, three things that you notice within the uh, picture. And you can put them in a chart. And then at the bottom, you're going to see two primary sources. And you're going to use those sources to answer the questions underneath that correspond with them. So make sure... You're using 
both primary sources, the painting as, long, as well as the uh, two primary sources at the bottom to answer the questions down at the bottom. Also, it says be sure to watch this video. Well, if you're watching this video, then you're good. And then once you're done, please submit it onto Canvas. If you've noticed, I started putting on these, I started linking the doc in two places so you know where to click. So if you didn't know, it's right there. Also in our um, daily announcement posts, I link the assignment as well. So there's no excuse not to know where the assignment is. It's there. And then let me give you a little sneak peek of what your next assignment is going to be. Although it's not published yet, your next assignment is going to be the argument for Manifest Destiny. Now you're only going to have two assignments this week, the Manifest Destiny and Westward Expansion intro, and then this one, which is the argument for Manifest Destiny. So this one, very similar to like what we've been doing, you're going to make a copy of the argument for Manifest Destiny, and then you're going to use the guided sources provided on Google Doc to answer the questions at the bottom. But all those questions are going to relate to the idea of why American society would be for this idea of Manifest Destiny. And of course, when you're done, you're going to submit it on to Canvas. But if we have an assignment that's an argument for Manifest Destiny, you know down the line, because we always look at both sides in this history class, next week you're going to have an assignment that's an argument against Manifest Destiny. Because looking at it through, you know, like rose-colored glass right now, you may think Americans are like, yeah, Manifest Destiny, let's expand out and take this land. But like every controversial issue, there's going to be two sides to it. So this week we're focusing on what is Manifest Destiny and Westward, Westward Expansion. Why was, you know, part of society for Manifest Destiny? And next week we're going to look at why was the other part of society, American society, against Manifest Destiny. So like always, do these... Oh, sorry. And this, uh, this assignment is going to be due on... I don't know why it says the Thursday. I'm probably going to switch this to Friday. So ignore that due date. I'm probably going to switch this to Friday. So it should be due Friday, April 17th by 11.59 p.m. So like always, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me on Canvas or email me. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Hopefully all of you are healthy and well. And until next time, see you later.